Great. So let's make a start. Welcome everyone to Friday's report out. I'm delighted to welcome colleagues for certainly for me the best meeting of the week. So uh, I'm really pleased uh, that we've got two uh, excellent report outs. The development of quality improvement resource pack and forum QI crew. Good to have um, April and Ms. Barr with us. That's great. And we've got trauma related service value stream 30 day report out for the RPIW. So uh, if colleagues are ready, um, shall we start with April and Ms. Barr? Uh, over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's April Daniel and I am the Governance and Quality Lead working in Women's CSU and I'm also got with me in behind me in the same office but a little bit of distance away. We've got Ms Beth. Hi, I'm Ms Beth. I'm with Anthony So we're both here today because we wanted to talk to you about something we've developed together which is a quality improvement resource pack and a forum that we're now developing which we have proudly called our QI crew. So we just wanted to pull together all the quality improvement work that's been going on uh, across our CSU and create a tool to be able to report and monitor the projects um, and also to empower staff to be able to develop their own quality improvement projects um, and supporting them in relation to QI. Where we sort of came this about from was in my role in governance and quality, I was starting to talk to people about quality improvement. Um, I'd done the QI training here. We were starting to encourage people to, you know, this is a QI project you're talking about, let's get this up and running. Um, and we were having variability in responses from staff about their knowledge and understanding and practical application of QI. So people knew the theory, but actually what they were looking for was some kind of, of sort of a resource pack or a toolkit they could sort of use to help them along their journey. So what we did is we did a really short summary PowerPoint presentation. It links in with all the existing QI work and QI training across the organisation, but just sort of concisely gives them it in like a little short you know, sharp presentation. And then we did some little templates for them. So we did a nice diagram template for them, a nice little simple project charter template, which is basically a project on a page. You know, what do you want to do? What's your milestones? Who is your project team? What's in scope? What's out of scope? And then we also created an, a, a little escalation report, which initially we were thinking, right, for each individual project, they could do regular updates to our women's um, quality assurance group meeting. The idea was, is we're giving teams sort of a toolkit um, with support from people like myself who spent time with them talking them through doing a driver diagram talking them through how to create the charter and we would then give them a monitoring and escalation process so they knew all oh, right okay i need to be on this we've got a little project group and on a regular basis i'm going to tell our women's governance but as we did that and um, it quickly evolved into our even better next step so the outcome of the resource pack was really, really positive and lots of staff came back to us with loads of amazing ideas. And we actually currently have 19 QI projects um, in various stages. So it became very clear that the staff were very interested in QI um, and we needed something to keep on top of them all. So this is where the QI crew was born. Um, so this is where staff can come with new ideas um, and we can also keep up to date with any existing projects, kind of seeing where the projects are up to, what the blockers are and what, anything that we can do to try and help and support move, to move the QI projects along. So as part of our crew, our crew members, um, we've got um, April who's experiencing QI and also governance lead. Um, we've got myself as digital midwife, we've got a business manager um, and we've also got a public health midwife. So the ideas will come to us as a panel and we will consider um, the QI project. So consider whether it already exists within our maternity system, whether it, it recognising inefficiencies, identifying any waste reduction, um, whether we've got money for it um, and where, if there is any other existing projects that are ongoing that we can link in with to avoid any duplication. So just, just to say really that immediately we got a really positive response from staff. 
there was certainly a lot of awareness about QI and lots of people doing QI, but giving them a really simple process, giving them some templates, they absolutely just took it off us. And it sort of really generated a lot of conversation in our CSU just about, is this a QI project I'm talking about? Is this something else? I sort of, I understand QI, but I don't really know how to apply it. Um, and so it's really generated so much conversation about what we can do to improve. And then it's also helping staff with their confidence on using, using the resources. So we've now helped um, um, teams and individuals do use different resources such as Jamboard as a way of sharing ideas, holding listening exercises, process mapping in preparation for QI work. And it's, it's coming from a place of support. So us as a team we're helping people on that journey some people their qi projects need consistent support all the way through some just need a little bit of a helping hand as they start their journey but certainly the conversations about qi have just really sort of blossomed over the past few weeks and people are really wanting to get involved and um, we're creating links it's creating a real positive network so the question was, what would you do differently? I think at the minute we're really at the start of a journey. So it, there will be learning. There will be things we would do differently. Certainly already we are starting to think about other tools that can help us in facilitate this work. So we're looking at what databases we can use to record the QI work, but um, capture um, engagement from staff, staff feedback and the ideas. So we're, it's really an evolving process. Um, I will say Ms Burt made us some badges. So we've already got badges and it was lovely that the first time Ms Burt and I first ever met in real life, we both brought along the same Colin the Caterpillar cakes. So I think myself, I found a like-minded <laughs> person, Ms Burt. So we've got a Q, I've got a QI friend. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it thank you fantastic what a nice way to end i love colin the caterpillar cake as well that's delicious um those badges are fantastic aren't they thank you thank you both of you that was really good really inspiring and great to see how you've galvanized everyone around this and uh, what was it 19 qi projects was it um remarkable yeah. so i'm sure there'll be questions guys at the end uh, because um there's a lot there's a lot there what I'm going to do is just to um, move us on so that we um, do the next report out and then we'll we'll collect questions at the end so let's move on then to a trauma related service value stream our 30 day report out for the RPIW uh, so welcome to the TRS team over to you guys Hello, my name's Amanda Walker, the Ward Manager of L9. I'm a process owner for the Rapid um, week Process Week, which was day one post-op NOF patients. The aims of the week and the work following this was to eliminate waste, reduce patient waiting times, reduce length of stay and improve patient experience. Problems and challenges that we faced, um, so variation of, so there's the three wards is L9, L34 and L35, um, and there was some variation over the three wards. Um, there still seems to be some variation which we're working together as process owners to try and make it more standard. We need to streamline the service we are providing. Um, one main aim was to ensure all three orthopaedic wards we're offering the same high standard of care for patients on the NOF pathway. And we are aware that one of the main issues impacting on the lead time currently is patient weights, which Katie is going to expand on on the next slide. Hello, my name is Katie Tankard. I'm the ward manager of L34 and the process owner of the RPIW. So the actions that have taken place in the last 30 days include um, working closely with medical illustrations team to put together um, a visually impactful parking space for the observations machine. So the aim of this is to reduce waste, uh, time wasted looking for um, the equipment needed. In regards to the catheters, the plan was to remove at 6am. Um, we decided 6am because when we discussed on arrival back to the ward, um, due to discomfort and disturbed sleep by using bed pans, uh, that had had more of a negative impact um, on the day one interventions. So I decided to do it at six o'clock when we were doing the observations um, for the morning. 
Uh, we have actually seen a decrease in catheters arriving on the ward post-operatively, um, but this is something uh, that we're still assessing with each patient that we get through the pathway. Um, the pain and blood pressure deficits, these were, we found that these were impacting on the physio sessions. So now what the nursing staff are doing is going around at 8am with the oxycodone, um, which saves time wasted waiting for a second checker giving the analgesia and also sitting them up in the um, cardiac chair um, positioning within the bed um, as advised by the physios just to give them time to acclimatise. Um, the patient feedback that we've got um, from the CNS is that the patients have got a more awareness um, of their analgesia options and also um, the utilising their analgesia better so it's providing better outcomes. In regards to weights, we've decided that we're going to do this within the physio and CSW sessions. This was to decrease the interventions um, that a patient was going through and also increase uh, productivity of the um, patient contact. This currently is the biggest hurdle um, to the outcomes um, of the data that we have collected. Um, some issues that we've found is the patient's presentation of physical abilities day one post-op have been a barrier so that it's not been safe to do this. Um, ideally, they should have been weighed within 24 hours of admission, but due to equipment issues that we spoke about um, initially, this is currently not achievable, which is why we've now incorporated it into the physio and CSW um, session. Um, this is the main focus of the next 30 days going forwards. In regards to the 4AT, this was brought into the process as it's part of the best practice tariff. And although the 4AT on its own would not impact the BPT overall results, it would ease the workload of the CNS and allow personal development of ward staff. In regards to nutrition, we've refocused on the protected meal times and had ward teachings. We've also been in touch with the dietitians who are ongoing with ward teachings across the trust due to the change in the supplements in LTHT, so they are already in place. So as I've already discussed, the lead time, the weight is still the main factor. So on, we're currently saving four hours um, from initial lead time, but we do believe that we would be closer to target had the weights have been done on day one because that was the um, factor in all of the longer times um, that were that where the delays were. Um, so obviously this is a new process for the physios and CSWs. We've reprinted out the standards um, for that session and also just kind of discuss that with physios. So, but we know now that that is what we need to be focusing on. In regards to the length of stay, it's too soon to see the impact on 30 days. Um, and on nutrition, it wasn't the main focus of the week, but alongside other work that's happening on the ward, this has improved and metric score has improved within the last month. Um, following on from this RPIW week already. Um, and VTE, we've improved awareness, so the compliance of that does seem to have um, improved. Um, and in regards to the 5S metric that we had in regards to the um, observation machines, which is the way in um, delivery of the wall stickers. Um, so what went well? Um, currently, we're doing the physio and clinical support work at MDT on day one which is going really, really well. We're having positive feedback um, from everybody that's involved in that. The 4AT assessment is still being completed and there's a greater understanding from everyone what the 4AT assessment is for. We have the visual boards on all three wards, which has um, got positive feedback from staff. And also Katie was saying she had some positive feedback from her relatives and they can understand the process day one post-op, which is really good. And it gets the conversation starting. And then work between the three wards has improved massively um, between the three orthopaedic wards, but we still need to standardise the work more, which we're working together as the three process owners to achieve this. And that's it. Thanks very much, Amanda and Katie. That's great. Really good and delighted to see the work continuing and the positive impact it's having. So um, well done and, and I'm sure there'll be colleagues that want to ask you about it. So um, let's move to the questions uh, phase. If we've got um, the appropriate slide, there we go. Um, so um, really good report out and you've heard 
from the development of the Quality Improvement Resource Pack and Forum, the QI crew, followed by TRS and their 30 day report out. So uh, questions, who'd like to kick off? Lisa. So for a start, thank you, Julian, with Ms. Bernie Pro. Sounds brilliant. I love it. And I love the badge and, and I love the um, the want to try and, you know, provide your teams with further knowledge. And so I guess what's been the main hook, do you think, to attract staff into into becoming you know, part of the crew? And do you think following the Ockenden review, there's more that we can do with the approach that you're taking? to engage the teams and not just within maternity, how we can learn from that more broadly across LTHT, because Ockenden impacts, doesn't it, not just at women's services, but but out touches everything. So have you got any thoughts on that, how we can learn from you? Hiya, I'll, I'll go. Um, I think the main hook was when we came up with something practical that they could actually do a simple tool. So I think I've worked in QI and I know that sometimes the language can be quite difficult for staff to really understand and I think sometimes we that can switch people off if I'm really honest and um, so I think when we sort of said look the, the driver this is what you do on the driver diagram you talk people through it's just getting your ideas on a piece of paper it clicks and you do it with them once and they're like I don't need you anymore I can do it now I get what you mean and they just want something that could that something that can easily like I guess I would say lift off a shelf do it and then know they're on track with something then so that was the first main hook I think it's really useful to have the idea of the forum we were sort of talking about is it like a dragon's den approach where people come and they say I've got an idea and I don't really know where to go with it because that's another thing is sometimes is having the networks of knowing where to go is there a pot of funding over here is actually what I'm talking about an existing report in K2 because people don't always know. So having that place in time where people can bring ideas to and it be quite, we're keeping it really friendly so it's not scary, we're keeping it quite informal so that people can sort of come along and they don't feel like they're putting in front of, you know, like a bunch of people who are, can be quite scary for, for staff. We want everybody to be able to share the ideas. And in terms of Ockenden, I've read Ockenden, I'm sure we've all, you know, looked at it in different ways. A big part of it for me is is how we engage and listen with staff. You know, we've got to really get those relationships working. We've got to make it so that people feel they can come and they can be honest and they can share ideas. And it's where we use different techniques. So we're doing some safety work in preparation for Well Patient Safety Day about medicine safety. And how we're coming at it is we're holding listening events for the staff. You know, we want them to tell us, we want them to tell us what the barriers are to medication safety, for them to earn the solutions. So that to me was the, a big part of Ockenden was, was getting out there and getting out to the staff and listening to them. For me, it was very personal because still, still working clinically, quite often we come out with these initiatives and it's knowing how they work for the clinical staff because these are the these are the midwives, nurses, doctors that are doing it day in, day out. And quite often when I'm clinical, people are coming up to me and saying, oh, oh, Miss, but can we do this in K2? Or can we do this? Can we do this? And they don't, they don't quite often, they don't have the time to write an email or chase it up. So we want to give them the, the support and the resources to be able to make their working lives easier. Brilliant. Thank Great. You. Thank you both. Um, really good um, reflections there, I think. Agree with 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 uh, those sentiments absolutely. So, any questions, uh, comments uh, from other other colleagues? Well, while you oh I, oh Anthony, Tony, how are you doing? Good to see you. Well, uh, well, Julian. Um, Good. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you, my friend, thank you. Um, yeah, can I just say, April and Ms. Bar. Uh, it was wonderful report. I've said in the chat how how dynamic what you were saying, but. I think what, what what I'd like to say is really stick with it because you've you've arrived at a at a at a at a step change point. You've actually got to the point where it, where uh, initiatives emanating from the Gemba are becoming standard work, and that that's what we're aiming for at the end of the day. That that it's that 
agency that we give to people working on the agenda to actually um, facilitate improvement, which is the key to the Leeds improvement method. And, and I, I, it's the most fantastic example that you've just reported on it. You know, it wasn't a long report, but it, it was so central to what we're about. So really well done. That's great. Thanks very much, Tony. Um, I wondered, I I just got a, um, just in terms of what we heard from Amanda and Katie, um, I wondered how, given it was a 30 day report out, you've seen some really positive progress and it's always can be quite challenging after 30 days and keeping things moving and keeping things going. And then you've got 60 and 90. Um, where would you say you, 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 you want your focus to be over the next sort of 30 days? Have you what, what are your thoughts on that? And where would you say that your biggest sort of challenges lie? Um, I think, as we kind of said in the presentation, the biggest issue at the moment, especially with our lead time, is patient waits. Yeah, um, and sometimes it's making sure that the equipment is available from when I've spoken with physios. If people are seeing two patients at the same time and they're both requiring the same equipment at the same time, um, so obviously um, sometimes people can't be weighed. I think continuing what we've already done and making sure that the initial changes kind of stay in practice, um, but then putting yeah. the focus onto the weights, that is definitely between now and 60 days where our focus needs to be because at the moment we, without yeah. without the delay in ways the lead time would have um improved dramatically yeah no I, absolutely katie and and uh, which is i mean it's really encouraging in terms of the work that the impact it's having and do you, do do you get a sense that your colleagues um uh, in the ward are, are feeling part of it do they are they appreciating what what you're trying to do and and, and and with you on on the work yeah absolutely I think just the feeling that we're working more as a team rather than two separate teams yeah working together even just small things I was talking to the physios this morning and they said it's nice to know everybody's name yeah. because it just yeah. went on the ward it's little things like that building those working relationships that I feel are having real positive impact on the kind of the ward culture as a whole um, and just the way that people are working really good point and i think that that chimes with what we were hearing from april and misbah doesn't it just the, the the way that improvement work really gets everyone feeling part of that team and having that input and feeling like their voice is heard and they they've got some ownership of what's happening it, it, it's it's so so crucial so really good really good to hear and um really good luck with with working through um the net that sort of towards your next report out and uh, do shout if there are things you you need from us to and i know the kpo team will be supporting you but um yeah that that's great so maybe time for just another question or two so i'll just scan the uh the hands any other questions or reflections well you must have covered everything then that's all i can think <laughs> So really well done. Um, we'll we'll close there then. Just can I just say to you, um, all, all of you who've reported out today, um, it, it's been really good. And I think there's been what's always good about this is that um, April, Ms. Barr, you'll have seen what Amanda and Katie have done and vice versa. And there hopefully will create the sort of joint learning across a lot of the improvement work and do encourage your colleagues to participate in report out see what's happening understand how you're you're doing this and that hopefully in turn will encourage others to get involved and be part of it because ultimately this will all and is all making a difference to the quality of care and patient experience so well done great report out thanks everyone Please do join us at the next one, Friday the 17th of June, uh, same time, same place in the virtual world. Look forward to seeing you then. OK, take care, everyone. End of report out.